trying cross country skiing. Yo, what's up guys? So in this video, we are trying the awkward sport of cross country skiing. It's sort of a funny looking sport. There's traditional cross country skiing, and then there is skate cross country skiing, which is what I'm gonna try in this. Now, what you might not know is cross country skiing is actually one of the best sports to level up as an athlete and to improve your health and longevity. Stay tuned to talk about the fascinating science behind this sport, and we're also gonna dabble in a little bit of some interesting history. So I've never tried this before. I've never tried cross country skiing. Then I heard of the benefits that just kind of blew me away. And it just so happens that I have some good friends who can cross country ski. So I say, hey, we need to give this a shot. So pack up your car, put a hand in your heart, say whatever you feel, be wherever you are. We ain't angry at you, love. You're the greatest thing we've lost. The birds still sing, folks still fight, the boards still creep. About to send my first double backy on cross country skis. Good luck. <laughs> All right, here with Thomas, he's my teacher today. Not a good one, but a teacher, I guess. You're helping me so far. Yeah, endurance here. Oh yeah. It's been very El Nino this winter. All this snow is pretty much fake, but thank you to Elm Creek for making it because otherwise we'd have nothing. Now, to be honest, going into this, I had way, way, way too much confidence. I'm like, yo, I'm a good athlete. I ski well. I skate well. I'm used to being in the snow. I'm from Minnesota, so it's like, I say, yo, this sport will be easy. wrong -oh. Absolutely not. I was so wrong. Dead wrong. Ugh. What are we doing? <laughs> not as easy as they make it look in the Olympics. Show us how it's done. This sport is so freaking awkward it's so awkward it's awkward timing and positioning it feels nothing like downhill skiing a little bit like skating but not really it's still really different it's just awkward it's weird so it took me a while to get adjusted holy shit but getting out of your comfort zone and trying new things is what i'm really all about so that's why i'm doing this and looking funny in the process so don't make fun of me until you try it yourself. Shit's easy, bro. So easy. The willingness to look and be a fool is the precursor to transformation. So the first thing that I noticed when I hopped on these bad boys was full body engagement. Before you even start moving, just to stay in one place, you have to activate a lot of muscles. But once you start moving, you're going to feel it in your gluteus maximus, your quads, your hamstrings, your calves, all of your lower body. And then with the pulling, you're going to feel it in your lats, your back, your arms, shoulders, abs, even your forearms, and your grip as well. It's one of the few sports that literally engages every muscle you can think of. One thing that makes a sport super difficult right away is the term proprioception. This is basically your balance and coordination, the awareness of your body in space. And skiing on uneven terrain demands balance and coordination. You have to engage your core stabilizing muscles. So one of the best parts of the sport, one of the more fascinating things is the cardiovascular benefits. Of course, you probably guessed that it's an aerobic activity that significantly boosts your cardiovascular health. It's gonna enhance your heart and lung capacity and will improve the efficiency of oxygen transportation in the body. Why did I do this? But the fascinating part about that Cross-country skiers are among the athletes with the highest ever recorded VO2 max scores. Now, if you ever listen to Andrew Huberman or Peter Atia, you know they talk about VO2 max all the time. It's basically the maximum amount of oxygen an individual can use during intense exercise. This is really saying is it's a measure of your aerobic endurance. It's a measure of how fit you are. At its, at its core, that's what it is. So if you think about it, when you're constantly using those muscles, blood and oxygen has to be pumped to those muscles. At the same time, your heart has to work just to move your body in general. So your body needs to get extremely efficient at utilizing oxygen, making oxygen that your muscles can use and getting it all over your body. So elite cross-country skiers will have VO2 max scores of 80, 90, even pushing close to 100, while your average person is somewhere between like 30, 35 for like a normal person. That is a huge difference. It is extremely, extremely good at burning calories. There's hay in the barn, there's wood on the fire. It will turn that shit up. 
On top of that, since you're outside in the cold, you have to acclimate to the weather and you have to have a little thermogenesis going on. And thermogenesis uses calories to keep your body warm. Now what's weird about the sport is you will stay so warm during it. I got so warm. Basically went full nude at the end. I can't put that on YouTube. Cancel that. And another fascinating part is how low impact the sport is. I was so surprised at how many old people we ran into that were in incredible shape. Probably because they cross country ski, so they're in good shape. Longevity, health, makes sense. But they're also super nice. But with this sport, I can drink more beer and it won't show. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta burn more of it off. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh. Now let's talk just a little bit about the cool history of the sport. Cross country actually has roots in ancient prehistoric time. They have found ski like devices made out of wood and bone that they used probably to hunt and for transportation. They mostly found these in Scandinavia, Russia, Asia. It is most popular in the Nordic regions. And in these Nordic regions, they actually used skiing in the military, which is super cool. So they'd get to areas that, you know, normal people can't access, giving them the nice vantage point. All times, the best chance of fulfilling its mission or to complete a hard-hitting military operation with the maximum efficiency and safety. In the first ever Winter Olympics in Chamonix, France, cross-country skiing was one of the events held there. Now the last little history piece that I have to talk about is in the state to my east, unfortunately, our rival state, Wisconsin, it's called the Berkey. It's part ski marathon, part Norwegian history, part street festival. We're underway! Each winter, Thousands of cross-country skiers from all across the world travel to the north woods of Wisconsin to travel more than 30 miles between the towns of Cable and Hayward. Now this is one of the most prestigious and iconic cross-country races in the world. So this is done to commemorate a historic event where two Norwegian warriors known as Berke Beiners Biners, no, I'm not sure how to say that, Berke Biner, rescue the infant heir to the Norwegian throne during a civil war. So the main event is this 50K race, which is about 31 miles. And the elite come to this, but even like beginners and people who barely can finish go to this. It's a super cool event. I hope to go there. Maybe I'll go this year. And I'm even thinking maybe I'll try to compete in it sometime. Hmm. So my goal for this video was to try something new that was outside my comfort zone that would improve me as a person. I learned a lot that I didn't expect to learn, and I hoped you learned something too and had a little fun on the way. Now click on this video right here because YouTube says that you're gonna like it. So, I don't make the rules, click it, click it. Cheers, buckos, appreciate y'all. Oh.